say goodbye. 810 on a Monday morning, and it's time now for Doc Talk, brought to you by Woodlawn Hospital. We welcome this morning Dr. Hawk in, and uh, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. And uh, well, for those uh, <coughs> listeners that uh, maybe didn't catch you last time you were on, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, what brought you to Woodlawn Hospital. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I'm Dr. Hawk. I'm the new general surgeon at the Woodlawn Hospital. I've always enjoyed rural surgery and um, Woodlawn seemed to be a perfect community and uh, the hospital offered a lot of opportunities. Awesome, awesome. Today we're going to talk a little bit about melanoma and uh, getting the importance of getting uh, checked and screenings and uh, it is getting that time of year where it's almost summertime and people are going to be out in that and uh, obviously that's one of the causes of uh, melanoma. Absolutely. Uh, about 78,000 people every year are diagnosed with melanoma, uh, mostly men. And um, it's most prominent around Caucasians uh, from Hispanic descent. Um, the disease, one of the advantages is that it's on the surface of the skin. So it's uh, a lot less invasive to uh, monitor and surveil. Uh, diseases such as uh, colon cancer, you have to monitor and get a colonoscopy. Yeah. Whereas you can just look at your skin. <laughs> so uh, surveillance, and fortunately for us, is less invasive, but also very important. And I'd like to talk about that today. Yes, we can talk about that. Uh, and it'll be interesting, too, because, like I said, it's, it's almost that time of year when uh, we're, everybody will be out in the sun. And uh, we need to make sure that we're protected from the sun, because that, uh, that's one of the uh, causes. Yes, absolutely. Um, um, although the incidence for young people is decreasing, it's frequently a disease of the young. And it's also you know, very concerning to diagnose a young patient with uh, melanoma. But also, uh, frequently, it's uh, easily treated just with simple mm -hmm. removal and not having to uh, take anything further. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the process of that. Obviously, uh, if, you, if you have a spot on your arm, I mean, you want to get that checked out. And if it does come back, uh, tell us the process of, of getting that removed. Sure, sure. Uh, <clears throat> so. You know, for folks who don't have a lot of mole, when a new mole appears, it's easy to you know, identify that. And um, But folks with a lot of moles, they really need to see a physician or a dermatologist or a surgeon or a primary care doctor to have what's called a dermatological survey. Look at their screen and look at the skin and uh, keep a sort of inventory of all the moles that they already know. Mm -hmm. Especially now, this is a challenge because, you know, it's... It, People with freckles uh -huh. increase the light skin, you know, light eyes, they increase the risk. But it has to be done. Yeah. And again, it's on the skin. Nothing, you know, it's not invasive. You just look at the person, right? right. Um, so it's easily surveilled. Um, and it's, it's very important. People with risk factors are identified. And they at least go once a year to their physicians or healthcare providers and have it surveilled. Now, how do we do it? So <clears throat> there are criteria. And the most important thing we look at is change. A mold that has been one way for a long time, all of a sudden it changed, right? Yeah. So it's, the criteria to remember is A, B, C, D. Okay. So it's, it's an atypical thing. And then, <laughs> and then the border. Uh, the, the border is not uniform. And it's nice, round, uniform, more or less likely to be, right? And see, D, C is color. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, right? And uh, the D is the chronicity, the date. We basically want it to look within, within a certain amount of time how it changed. Those are the, so again, you know, this is not a 100% catch-all. But my point is that if you have a mole that is you know, biopsied and it comes back benign, to me, that's not a defeat. That's yeah. a victory. Right. Because you looked at the risk factor, you removed it, it's gone. So anyway, that's, that's the... <clears throat> well, it's always safer that way. I mean, because it could still turn into down the road if you don't get it taken care of, correct? Absolutely. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, yeah, and especially for people... And, if the mole is, you know, somewhere like the face or the visible, you know, what's called the cosmetic areas, then of course, then there's a concern, right? Uh, but if the mole is somewhere in the torso or the arm, but, you know, cosmesis is not as important a concern. If it is a concern, it's best to get it out. We talk about risk factors and everything, and you said it's mainly in males with white Caucasian. What are some of the other uh, risk factors that maybe people uh, could, could be aware of? Sure. N not mainly, but... More commonly, more commonly, more commonly now. See, it's it's a disease of the Caucasian folks be, okay. because naturally the ability, you know, darker folks produce melanin in, resp in response to sun injury that prevents the skin's uh, forming layers from injury from the sun. But unfortunately, the Caucasian folks, you know, they don't have as much melanin; they can't form the defense, and uh, that you know, over time, 
you know, the, the most prominent risk factor for melanoma is sun injury. Mm. Uh, and particularly when people are teenagers and young. <laughs> and that's the, interesting, that's the population I see wearing sunscreen the least. <laughs> and you know, my friends, you know, their kids, they come to play with me and I'll ask them, hey, are you wearing sunscreen? Yeah. Rarely I will see one, two, you know. <laughs> so, and, but fortunately, you know, although the incidence of melanoma is increasing, there are two good trends. Number one, the death rate from melanoma is decreasing. Okay. Even, even though if it's much higher than we originally started keeping data, but it has come down from its peak. Okay. Number one. Number two is that the incidence of melanoma among younger people is decreasing. I think this is because of all the surveillance and education of the public, mm -hmm. right? But the, in increase, the, the incidence of melanoma older folks is increasing. Because mm. they don't think it, they could get it? Or what do you think that philosophy is? I don't know the, 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 the truth, but I can only offer a conjecture. My conjecture is that, you know, as folks get older, there are so many other health concerns that looking at the skin becomes second. That, that this yeah. is, I'm making it clear, this is a conjecture. I right, right, to, right, yeah. Yeah. So, but nonetheless, I mean, again, I will say, it's, it's right on the skin. And uh, if you have a suspicious mole, just get it up. Probably one of the easiest ones to, uh, to to take a look at and detect, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the other thing is that, you know, they always come again, always again, that, that dermatological survey, right? You, you know what the mole is, you looked at it, and, and a, lot, a lot of physicians will photograph the mole. They'll keep mm -hmm. it, and nowadays we have electronic you know, record, <laughs> so we can take a picture and have the electronic record on chart. And if it changes, then we take action. Yeah, obviously, then you'll have that to look back to. Um, I, I know a lot of times, too, uh, People think, oh, it'll go away. Well, not necessarily, right? I oh, mean, not necessarily. Yeah. No, no. In fact, if a mole that was there and all of a sudden has disappeared, and if it was a true mole, mm -hmm. that's a concern. Okay. Because a, a benign normal mole should not go away. I've had this mole since I was like <laughs> two years old. So, so if it goes away, that that should be addressed. Obviously, one of the easier uh, things to uh, f for the getting. Uh, Preventing it is to have the sunscreen, especially on the younger kids. Absolutely, you know they go in the lake, they go in the beach, and you know, put the sunscreen on and uh, apply it properly. And you know, if once they go in the water, it has to be reapplied. Yes, yes, of course, it is a chore, but <laughs> considering the alternative. Yes, exactly. Obviously, uh, we're talking about melanoma, and uh, you obviously would gladly to see some people if they need, if they had questions about it. Yeah, yeah, you know, I had a, I previously had a program where we would offer uh, melanoma screens to, to folks in the community. You know, mm -hmm. I would go to the fair, I would go to different, yeah. Uh, you know, we haven't discussed anything formally yet in Woodlawn, but mm -hmm. so far I've discussed it unofficially with two people and they've been very, very encouraging, so, yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to, to hearing more about that, obviously. And, Absolutely. And especially as, like, we talked about, the, the, the spring time coming, the sun's going to be Absolutely. out, more yes. people are going to be out yes. in it, obviously we'd want to take care of a, yes. our skin that way. And this is a farming community. People yeah. are out on a day. I mean, this is not, you know, they're out for pleasure. They're out from <laughs> morning sundown to sunset. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so yes, absolutely. And, you know, if they come to my office, of course, I'll always offer this to Dr. Hawk with us this morning talking about melanoma. And uh, what else would you like to talk about? Anything else you want to bring up real quick this morning? No, it's uh, just a perpetual pleasure. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy very much uh, serving the people here and meeting new folks. Oh, well, appreciate you coming in, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Hawk of the Woodlawn Hospital here on Doc Talk this morning. Now it's Ed Sharon and Khalid. Beautiful people. <laughs>